I am so excited to see all of you here. We are talking about fasting again, and it's how to make fasting a lifestyle. We have to be very careful when we when I, even me just saying that how to make fasting a lifestyle, because we want to be very careful that we don't become a Pharisee. We don't want to become either prideful or doing it for show, or we're doing it for methodical reasons. We want to make sure we're doing it because this is what God's called us to do. All right. And our, our scripture memory verse for last month was Ezra eight twenty three. So we fasted and entreated our God for this. And he answered our prayer. This is not just to, this is not just a, a child going into the grocery store saying, Hey, I want that. I want that. I want that. No, they fasted and entreated. They seriously got, got on their knees is talking to God for the problems that they were dealing with. And he answered their prayer. So this is a verse that is good to have in your memory. So tonight is about a lifestyle of fasting. Now, this is something I want us to understand. Fasting is not IF, which is intermittent fasting. Fasting is not OMAD, which is one meal a day, or it's not even the Daniel fast. These are just tools for fasting. So many people are caught up into the trend right now of IF fasting. Yeah, yeah, I'm IF fasting. Oh, I'm OMAD fasting. That's great, but that's not what I want you to be focused on. I want you to be focused more on this is a discipline of the Christian life and a discipline not to be determined by others, but by our desire to see me or my desire to see me more in the image of God. Now, I may use the tools of IF, OMAD, or Daniel Fast. Those are my tools but that's not what I am or what I'm doing. It's more of, I am fasting as a discipline. I am fasting because I really want to become that much more in tune with how God speaks, how God works and how he's working in my life. So I, I just kind of cringe if we're, if, when people are out there saying, oh, I'm an IF faster or I'm an OMED, I feel like we're taking away the spiritual significance of fasting when we classify it so much in these terms, even the Daniel fast. Now realize the Daniel fast is not a biblical term. It's just a trend of our time to add the word fast in there. It's just a way we identify a certain style of eating and several people have brought that to attention on YouTube. Uh, so I don't want to misuse these words because I so want to be um, in agreement with, with God's word. And so it is just a way of eating, seeking the Lord's direction. Okay. So let's look at fasting as a Christian in our daily lifestyle for spiritual. So this is kind of a review, but it's important for us to do this review recognize any situation can be a reason for fast. When we make this part of our lifestyle, you may not even be thinking of doing a fast for the next couple of weeks. And we'll get into that, but any situation can come up where it's like, you know what? I'm going to fast about that. Now in the past, we would say, you know what? I'm going to pray about that. And that is still key. That is still very important. And I'm not removing that or replacing that or um, making that of lesser value. No way. I'm not doing that. There's nothing better than just talking with the Lord and having that communication. But I'm saying is any situation can be a reason to fast. Now that you are um, understanding what a fast is, you understand lots of ways to incorporate fasting. You've gone from, you know, five hour fast between meals to three meals a day to a full 24 hour to maybe even a 36 hour, however long you've gone. And you're recognizing, you know what, I feel really good when I do the certain fast, a 24 hour fast or a 30 hour fast. And so now that you have trained your body how to fast, 
Now think back to Esther and Daniel. This is what I love about them taking into captivity as a youth. They both knew when the time came how to fast. They didn't go back to Mordecai. Wait a minute, Mordecai, remind me again. Why would I want to do a fast? No, Esther called it on her own. Daniel referred to it several times because as a child, they were taught to fast. It was as common as talking to God. They would fast. It was just part of their discipline. This is how you are now. You've gone through studying about fasting. You now understand it. You know how to use it. So now you realize any situation that comes up that needs some spiritual attention between you and God could be a reason to fast. And so you have really made some great progress in your walk with the Lord, understanding this fasting is not just sorrow. You'll hear many people say that, oh, it's about, you know, deprivation. It's about, we need to be sorrowful. It can be, but it doesn't always have to be. We can actually fast for joyous reasons. I know that's contrary to our upbringing. When we have these celebrations, always are, it's always about, oh, let's go to the ice cream place. Oh, let's go eat this. Let's go eat that. When you accomplish this, let's go have a Sunday. You know, those are periods of rejoicing is always with food. But you know what? What if you fasted just to celebrate between you and God, just to spend time in praise and worship? I'm just going to fast through this breakfast or this lunch, and I'm just going to just spend that time in praise and worship. So fasting does not have to be just in sorrow. We can fast full of thankfulness. And so I want you to see many different ways that we can use this discipline in our life. And I really don't like the word discipline, but is it is a word that's used for our benefit in scripture, you know, so always refer to those scriptures in the new Testament. So fasting is a discipline along with Bible study, prayer, celebrating the feast, because I like that part, the Sabbath, Lord's Supper, communion, fasting can be stepped into at any moment. You may wake up and think you're going to have a normal day, and then a few things happen, or you get a phone call, and you're like, oh, I don't know what to do in this situation. Yes, I can pray about it, and totally, that's true. That's 100% correct answer. Yet lunchtime may be coming up and you may be thinking, you know what, Lord, I'm just going to bypass lunch because I really need to spend that time praying with you. I need direction. This is serious. I don't know what to do. So be ready to step into fasting at any moment. And for whatever reason, God puts it on your heart. And so I just feel like we're in kind of a, a graduation phase right now going over this, how to make this part of my lifestyle is always having it part of your life. Okay. So fasting as a Christian in our daily lifestyle for physical healing. And so I just listed five reasons on here. You have probably experienced a lot more other ways that you have gone through healing by doing your fast, but the number one reason, because we are such sugar holics in America and even around the world, I'm hearing more and more testimonies of people around the world who still have the sugar issues. It's not just our issue here but it's a release. It's removal of sugars from the bloodstream, lowering that insulin level, lowering that blood glucose level. That is so pivotal to allowing your hormones to be happy, your brain to be able to think again, and just for your body to work, your muscles to be strong and toned, just getting those blood sugars out of that system and where they need to be, get them parked where they need to be, and then don't let them out again. (laughs) Okay pandemics. We've just gone through one. um, And fasting is the perfect answer for a pandemic, not only for the physical healing, but it would take you through to the emotional and the mental healing of it as well. Fasting for physical reasons lets us be reminded God is the ultimate healer. So when we're fasting and fasting as a Christian would always incorporate prayer Fasting without prayer is just abstinence of food. Okay. Um, It's very well picked up on the fact that they call it a fast, but it's just abstaining from food or a certain food. Fasting for physical healing is always going to reset your digestive system. And that's the beauty of what you have done. You have walked through different styles of fasting, different time periods of fasting. So your body has an idea like, oh, she's going to fast again. 
and we're not going to be as mean to her next time. <laughs> okay. The first time is like your body's rebelling because of what we've been eating or how we haven't been in the fasting state before. Now your body's like, Oh, here we go. We're going to fast again. And you're going to cruise right through it. It's going to help reset your hormones. So if you feel like, wow, I don't know where that hot flash came from. I don't know where that PMS issue came from. Then just take some time out and do a little bit of fasting. And then one of the biggest ones is food addictions. There are times when I travel. So many times I try to take as much food as I can, but if we start eating out, then it will trigger a food craving and I'll come home and I'll be wanting more of those foods. And it's like, no, I've got to go into a fast or I'm going to start a downward spiral. So I immediately have to step into a fast and typically just a 24 hour fast will reset my addictions and get rid of them. But anything can trigger an addiction. You could be eating healthy for the next three years. And all of a sudden something happens is like you hit a trigger and it's like, where did that come from? But we may not recognize we hit that trigger until a couple of days later. And it's like, wow, what am I doing? Why am I eating like this? Go back to the roots, go back to your tools. And fasting is one of those tools. And so when we hit one of those cravings, a lot of times our mind can go in directions into those thoughts that we used to have, which we got rid of. And so we need always be mindful of what we're thinking, what we're doing, and is everything in agreement with God's word. All right. So fasting as a Christian in our daily lifestyle, relational fasting for others. And I talked about this on the call last night. Uh, and so our 40 day call fasting for others. We have political leaders, everyone that is in charge of us in authority over us is someone that we need to consider fasting for. Now, I always think when I want to think mean thoughts, uh, I have to remember, you know, even Christ on the cross, he forgave everyone around him. And if he was not abused, I mean, he was clearly abused, but yet he forgave them. And so for me to have that same heart to people who are doing things that I don't agree with, sometimes I have to go into a fast for that person. Maybe, and I, <laughs> I always pray, Lord, can it just be one meal? I don't know if I can, I can meditate on that person too long. Um, just one meal. Can we just clear it up in one meal? And I promise I'll change my attitude toward them. Um, so anyway, just kind of joking a little bit there, but there are many times for family and friends and coworkers who need the Lord, but sometimes we just need to fast for them. Your pastor, your pastor's wife is such a fishbowl lifestyle that everyone looks at them, watches them, criticizes them. What if we were to fast for them instead and fast for witness opportunities? I try to bring up this topic every Sunday night on our family call. We have a call on Sunday nights where uh, my son's family will get on and my daughter's family will get on and we have time of praise and time of prayer request and just, Hey, what's going on? Cause we don't live close together. So this is our time of coming together. And I try to impress, you know, who can we pray for that you want to witness to, or if you don't have someone, then let's pray that God shows you someone. I'm trying to get the children to hear that as often as possible. Who are you praying for? Who do you want to share Christ with? Who is your one? Um, so anyway, trying to bring that to the forefront of their mind as often as possible, but yet we as adults, you know, it's like, well, Lord, you know what? I haven't shared the gospel with anyone in, in years it might be your comment. Then maybe you need to fast for God to show you who he wants you to witness to. And then fast to solve fast to solve problems with other people, with relationships. All right. To stay ready to fast spiritually. So I put a few quotes up here. We have Dwight Moody. He says, if you say I will fast when God lays it on me, you never will. Now I'm just going to pause right there in the middle of that comment. How many of you have said, well, you know, God didn't really, other people will say, well, God didn't really call me to pray about that. Oh, really? And so you chose not to No, and, or God really hasn't called me to, to fast. Well, Dwight L. Moody is saying, Hey, if you say I will fast when God lays it on me, then you never will. We all know that you're too cold and indifferent. So take the yoke upon you. What he's saying is do it anyway. Don't wait for, you know, that one ray of sunlight to hit right on your Bible verse where it says the word fast for you to fast. No, do it anyway. Fasting and vigils without a special object in view are time 
run two ways. This is old writing. You can tell they are made to minister to a sort of self gratification instead of being turned into a good account. This is David Livingston. And so this is kind of what we see with people who are only focused on IF or OMED. Now for, to do those for physical reasons, there's nothing wrong with that. I'm not putting anyone down, but I'm saying as a Christian, I want you to take it to the full context of the word, the full value of the word and not be doing it just for self-gratification, but for relationship, um, personally, um, working with God and hearing from God. And this one, I really like Charles Stanley, a lot of dead churches would catch fire. If the people in places of leadership would set aside a period of time for fasting and prayer, fasting brings about a supernatural work in our lives. But when he says people in places of leadership, we are all in leadership. We all have an influence over people around us. So think about, you know, a lot of dead churches. Well, a lot of hurting families, if we were to say it that way, would be, would be healed if the people in that family would fast. A lot of hurting relationships would turn around if people would fast. A lot of um, dead churches could be turned around also if one person, a fervent prayer warrior in that church started fasting and praying for that church. Uh, I tell you a story. My daughter, when we moved here to Virginia, she went on a mission trip with the youth group and she went up to Pennsylvania. It was this um, kind of in the, in the in, uh, inner city part of Pennsylvania. I don't remember what town. And they were out on this playground and they were inviting all of these children to come and to come to uh, like the, um, the Bible class that they were going to have and the crafts and all of that. Well, my daughter had the opportunity to meet a lady and she was an elderly lady. And so she was kind of canvassing the neighborhood inviting. And the the lady came out of her door and stepped out by the fence. And she says, what are you doing? And Stacy says, well, we're holding some Bible clubs here. We want to invite the children to come and hear about Jesus. And she said the lady started getting and just come breaking out with tears. And Stacy was quite young at the time. She was 16 and I've had her on mission trips all of her life, but she still got taken aback. She's like, oh no, what did I say? And she says, well, what's wrong? And the lady says, I've been praying for you to come for five years. And that touched Stacy's heart. And that lady said she had been praying and fasting for five years for a group to come and reach the children in that neighborhood. And that's what I mean. You know, what would happen? What would catch fire in, in your family, in your marriage, in the relationship with your kids, in your, uh, in your church, if we were to incorporate more fasting into our life? So schedule the fast on your calendar. I've mentioned her before, but Shirley Dobson chose to fast every Monday for her husband, Jim Dobson, who was once with um, Focus on the Family, and now he has a different ministry, which I forgot his name, uh, the name of it off the top of my head, because she knew he would be under much attack. And we've witnessed that in his lifetime and in his ministry. Seek the Lord for additional times of fasting. When you hear prayer requests from others, when you see people struggling, and when you are struggling. And Jesus warned against fasting like the Pharisees. We're not to fast like the Pharisees and, you know, let everybody know, post it on Facebook. Hey, I'm fasting for so-and-so today. I'm so good. You know, yeah, I just don't think that's going to go over real well. Might be interesting on Facebook to see the comments, but I just don't really think God is going to honor that. Or even just to, to look like you haven't eaten in three days. I'm so tired and I'm so hungry. I could eat anything. You know, that's really not what this is about. That was more of a, um, a Pharisee fast. So we want to be careful about that. This is kind of a review for you. Many different types of fast, how you use them determines the outcome. So now that you understand fasting, you've got rotational fast. We're changing foods, different days. You've got the Daniel fast. We're eliminating food groups for 21 days, or you could do it longer. You're doing a water fast. You're doing a liquid fast. You're doing a broth fast. There's so many different types of fast. So you, how you fast and what you fast from is between you and the Lord. You can even do a media fast. I'm going to eliminate all social media. I'm going to eliminate all TV. I'm going to eliminate all screen time and do that for a week. <laughs> you're going to find yourself probably with a lot of time on your hands. And then you're going to like, what am I going to do at this time? Well, maybe you could spend more time praying and studying God's word. So you can have a media fast. You can have, you know, um, 
whatever, whatever you use your time with now, you could fast from it just to use that time for the Lord. So I have on here, be real and be ready. You are the one who knows what type of fast you feel like benefits you the most so that you can really concentrate on what God is doing and then be ready at any moment's notice at any whisper of the spirit to go into a fast and do, and to step into it with an attitude of excitement. All right. So just to kind of go over again, the results of fasting, it it gives you increased spiritual authority. You get to (laughs) receive, I got to say these words, right? Receive divine affirmation, whatever you're going through. You just need God to just, you know, can you just affirm this in my heart? Now, just realize not every fast you, there have been fasts that I've walked away. And I'm like, you know, I just didn't really hear anything new. I didn't hear anything special. I, you know, I didn't get that event that Annette had, you know, I've had fasts like that. I'm like, you know what, Lord, I guess it was just time just to spend with you. And I'm just going to go with this. Cause I know every fast I do prepares me for the next fast. Um, so it's not like you can just say, I'm going to fast and God's going to tell me my answer. It doesn't always work like that. Um, obtaining new direction in your life, enhanced desire to pray, new power for spiritual warfare. That's on us right now. If you aren't recognizing it, then you need to get out and about because we are there. Um, victory over satanic strongholds, assurance of divine protection. Always remember you have that increased sense of God's presence. Now that's sweet and break attitudes that are hindering your walk with the Lord. All right. So let me um, stop sharing. And so tonight I just really wanted us to realize that we can always be in a lifestyle of fasting. It doesn't mean we're always fasting (laughs) because, well, we really wouldn't weigh very much if we did, Uh, but always having that attitude, 